And then inside of this card, which is just like a little block then it kind of has a nice little border to it so it will separate our items out. Uh, we're going to need to put a bunch of different things. So I want to have the body text, I want to have the author, and then to the right hand side I want to have a little icon that's a like button, and I want to display the number of likes that we're going to have for this post. Uh, so that's what we're going to have to do here. This is <laughs> going to get fairly complicated, but regardless, let's just go ahead and try it out. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start by saying card, child and then we're going to make a row that's going to hold our um what's it going to be i guess the title or not the title sorry the body text the author will be in one kind of section of the row and then to the right hand side of the row we will have the like button and the number of likes so if i bring up my thing again what i'm trying to do is have like on the left hand side what the post was so the content that they posted and then the um, author right below that and kind of like subtitle text and then on the right hand side a like button and a little number displaying the number of likes so that's what this row is going to represent so inside of this row i'm going to say children and we're going to say is equal to widget and there's going to be a blank list and then inside of here what we're going to do is we're going to add a few expanded children that are going to take up this entire row so again remember what expanded does is just fill with the entire space so we're going to have two expanded in here which are going to hold the two different things that we want so the first thing that i want is the um that text that i've been talking about so that body text and that author text so what our child for the first expanded widget is going to be is a list tile now a list tile essentially is just um, gonna give us a nice way to format what I've been talking about. It's so like that body text and that author. So we'll say list, oops, like that, and then tile. And inside of here, we can have a look and we can see that it has, oh, well, it's kind of cutting off here, but it has a title and a subtitle trailing, is three line enabled, a bunch of other stuff on tap, on long press. Uh, so we can do a bunch of stuff with this. But what we're going to do is we're just going to say title like that. And for the title, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to put uh, whatever the title of the post is. So we're just going to say post dot. And in this case, it's going to be body. Uh, I think that's what I wanted. Yeah. So we're going to say post dot body. We need to wrap that in a text widget. So we'll say text post dot body because this accepts a widget. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the subtitle. So the subtitle is simply going to be the author's name. So we'll do the same thing. We'll go text and let me just save this so we get some better output. Awesome. So text and then inside of here, we're going to say post dot author. So remember, post is defined right here and we can simply access the attributes of post like the body of it and the author of it by just calling the dot operator, and whatever the name of that field is. So that's all we need, I believe, for expanded. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add the like button and the um, little number that's showing the amount of likes. So inside of another expanded widget or actually, sorry, not another expanded widget inside of a row widget, we're going to delete that. We're going to have the like button and then the number of likes. So we're going to say children widget. And then the first thing we're going to do is put an icon button. So I believe we already showed how this works. So I'll skim through it quicker. We're going to say icon button like that. And then we're going to say icon oops, is equal to the icon of icons dot. And I believe this one is thumb up or something like that. Yeah. So icon icon is icon dot thumb up. Awesome. So let's save that. Now what else do we need for our icon button? I believe we need to have an on pressed method. So what happens when we press this button? Well, that's a good question. Now we need to call a method when we press this. So what we're actually going to call when we press this is the um, let's have a look here. Where is post is the method that we defined up here, which is like post. So essentially, whenever we click the like button, we will call on uh, like post on that post so that it will add one or it will handle, you know, should we add a like, should we delete a like, so on and so forth. So to do that, we're going to say post dot like post. And we don't need the other set of brackets there because this is going to just call that function. We're just defining what it is. And with that for now, I think I'm going to leave it like that. I just want to render this and see what it looks like first. Uh, and then we can keep going from there. But I want to <laughs> do something because right now we have not changed anything at all. So let's hot reload that. And let's just type hello and let's see what's happening here. Okay, so you can see that now that's actually being added into the list view. We have hello, Tim. And we have that little like button. And if I go Tim like that, I go yes, like that, go sure, 
like that. You can see we have this list now that has all of the items that we're talking about. Now it doesn't automatically scroll to the bottom. It's not super fancy or anything like that. And yes, this still looks kind of weird because it's right there. Uh, we'll change those things later, but for now you get the idea that that's what this list view looks like. And this is kind of what a card is, is these little things that have a bit of padding and some separation between them. Okay, so now we need to add, so let's go back actually here for a second. We need to add that little icon that's telling us how many likes we actually have. We can add that before or after the like button. I think it might look le look better before on the left-hand side of the like button. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to uh, go inside of children here and, and we're gonna say container, oops, so container like that. Uh, and inside of container, we're going to put the child as some text. So we'll just say child equals text. And we're going to say this is post dot likes like that. Uh, post dot likes is a reason that's not working. Oh, it's because it's text. We need to put that to string. So we're going to grab the amount of likes from this post and just put that into a string. And we'll simply put that inside of a container and display that. Now, there's a few other things that I want to add here. Uh, so the first thing is inside of text, I want to change the font size to make it a bit bigger. So I'm going to say style like that. And then we can say this is text style. And inside of text style, we'll simply say font size like that. And we'll just make this size 20. That way it's just a little bit larger. And then the last thing that I have is I have some padding inside of this container just to make it so that it's not kind of squished and right beside this icon button. So I'm going to say padding like that. And then inside of here, we're going to say this is equal to edge insets like that. And I believe we just put dot from LTRB. So what this is saying is edge insets dot from left top right bottom. So we're making a padding and we just define how much padding we want on the left side, the top side, the right side, the bottom side. Now padding is just amount of pixels that are separated between the widget and another widget. So in this case, this widget is going to be to the left where the icon button is. So I'm going to add padding to the right side of this so that it pushes it away from the other widget. So I'll just add, I guess we had what, like 10, um, I don't know, 10 pixels of padding. So we'll add 10 pixels of padding like that. And I'll make the rest of them zero. And now if we go ahead and take a look here after hot reloading, let's see what we're getting. So if we add something like that, we can see now that we have the likes, right? We have all the likes popping up. And if I actually click the button, uh, nothing is happening right now. So we'll need to do something to change that so that when we click the button, it actually gets updated. But you can see right now at least that this is working and now we just need to fix the button and make this layout look a little bit better. So the reason that this button isn't actually working when we press it is because when we call this method post.like post, we're not telling this widget to update. We actually need to put this inside of a set state so that we actually tell this widget, hey, when we click this button, we need to update this text because post.like post, if we have a look at where what's actually happening here, there's nothing that says this dot set state. So since it doesn't think the state of the widget is changing, it's not actually going to update what's being rendered. So we need to make a method here. And we'll just call this void, um, you know, like or something like that. And all we're going to do is we're simply going to call. So we need to actually pass the post object first of all. Uh, actually, we'll call, we'll just put callback in here. So we'll say function callback. Uh, and then what we'll do inside of here is say this dot set state. And inside of the set state, we'll just go callback like that. And let's add our semicolons. And I think that should be good. So what this is going to do is it's going to say, OK, we're going to set the state and we're just going to call this callback function. And now on the on press, what we can do is we can simply call like so we can say like and we can pass the post dot like post. So let's make this an arrow function. So like that. And now what will happen is we will call this function which will simply call the current function, which is called like. So let's reference that with this dot like, and then that will pass post dot like post. And what will happen is we will call this dot set state with the callback, which will be uh, post dot like post. So now let's have a look at what happens and see if this is working. So now if I press the button, you can see that it's toggling from zero to one and it's actually being updated because of the fact that we're setting the state. Now, the next thing that I want to do, though, is I want to give us some kind of indication on whether or not we've liked this or not, because if I'm looking at this right now, 
I don't know if I liked this or if I didn't like this. And especially if there's a bunch more likes, it's gonna be hard for me to determine that. So let's change the color of this like button if we've liked it. So it's actually pretty easy to do inside of icon button. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add color. And I'm gonna say the color is uh, going to be determined by if the user has liked this post or not. So I'm going to start by saying post.user liked, which remember tells us if the user has liked the post or not. I'm going to put a question mark, which essentially is saying if this is true, what I write on the right hand side here will be what the color of this button will be. So I'm going to say colors.green. So this says if the user has liked this post, then make this uh, green. Otherwise, which is this colon right here, we need to pick the other color we want it to be. So we're just going to say colors dot black, which I think is the current color. And now this essentially is saying, okay, if this is true, colors dot green is what it's going to be. Otherwise, colors dot black is what it will be. That's the uh, kind of inline expression here. You can think of this as just like a condensed if statement. If true, do this. Otherwise, do this. That's what it's saying. So let's give that a save and let's now have a look here. And we can see this button is green because we've liked it. And as we unclick it, it goes back to black. So I think that's pretty cool. I think that looks good. And now all we need to do is change this so that this widget that we have right here is actually at the bottom of the screen. OK, so to get this to go to the bottom of the screen, there's a few things we're going to do. First, I'm going to get rid of this expanded here and let's just have a look at what happens if I do that. So let's refresh here when we get rid of expanded and we can see that that actually brings us all the way down to the bottom of the screen. So the reason that that worked is because since we have ex this actually has a height already, this this uh, thing at the bottom, this post box, right? Since it already has a notion of a height, uh, we don't need to expand it, right? And I was accidentally expanding it before. That was just my mistake. And when you expand that, what it's saying is, OK, take up as much room as I can. And since we have two things inside of a column, that means this is going to take up half the column and this is going to take up the other half. Now, if I get rid of the expanded off that, what that means is, OK, this is going to going to expand as large as it can, and it will only expand so such that this can fit on the screen, right? So it will take up all of the space other than what this takes up. So that's kind of how you fix that um, is just make sure that if you have something that actually has a height already and has some items in it, it's not expanded if you want it to be in a certain area and the thing above it or below it or whatever you're doing can be expanded to fill the rest of the space. And there we go. Now we have a list view and we can add stuff to the list, right? If I go hello and I click enter, we can scroll down and we can see we have the post hello. Now, not the most fluid thing in the world, you know, obviously a lot of different changes we can make. And in fact, I'm going to do one last thing before we end the video here. I want to make it so that when we type something in and we press enter, it automatically collapses this text box here. So, you know, when you're like typing in a form and you press enter and your text field goes away, it disappears. You don't have to click out of it. That's what I'd like to do, just because this is kind of annoying that I'm going to have to, you know, like click the button or click the check mark to actually get it to go away. So to do that, I've actually got to find what the um, the command is because I forget, but we're going to go inside of this click method, which is inside of the text input widget state. And instead of just clearing the text field, what we're going to do is we're going to put it down and then we're going to clear it uh, or we'll clear it and then we'll uh, pull it down. So to do that, we're going to say focus. And I believe this is scope. So focus scope dot of we're just going to type context like that dot unfocus. This seems weird. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really know how we just grab context like that. Um, this is just something I found on Stack Overflow that seems to work being transparent with you guys here. Uh, this is going to just take the focus of wherever we currently are. So the context and just unfocus it. So in that case, if we're in a text field, it will just unfocus the text field. So let's give that a shot just by saving this file here. And now if I type something and, and hit that button, we can see we clear the text field and it unfocuses it. And I noticed just by looking at this that you can kind of watch it clear and go down at the same time. So maybe to fix this, what I can do is I can actually just put the uh, controller dot clear after the focus goes away and we'll actually not even call um, the widget callback until after we remove the focus and clear the text. So that way you can kind of see it being added to the list. So let's give that a shot now and see how this looks. So if I add something and press enter, uh, OK, it seems to be doing the same thing. But regardless, I don't think the order really matters. Now we have all of these items in our list. We can scroll through it and we can like and unlike our posts.
So that is pretty much all I have for you guys right now. That is the list view. That's how we set up the like counter, the like button. Uh, if you want to reduce the padding or change the style, you're obviously welcome to do that. Uh, and in future videos, we're, I guess we're going to be setting up some kind of system where when you log in to start, you have to pick a username so that we know what your name is going to be when you're posting. And we're going to hook this up to a database. We're going to have comments, hopefully a bunch of other cool stuff. I'm looking forward to making that in the rest of these videos. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you again in another Flutter video.